Hey, welcome back. Um, I'm in the process of, of boring this uh, hand wheel to another diameter, which already happened, bore to 70 millimeter. Now it needs a five millimeter keyway. So let's head over to the shaper and cut this keyway. Um, that's no shaper. Dang it. <laughs> Uh, okay, I guess we have to f uh, do it another way. Okay, <laughs> uh, sorry for the small joke. Um, I want to show you uh, how I cut a keyway, internal keyway on the milling machine, using the milling machine as a slaughter or a vertical shaper. Cutting a, a keyway on a milling machine is not, nothing I invented or that's anywhere new, but I guess I could, could show it while I'm doing it. Uh, the, the hand wheel is just held on a large steel parallel with two clamps and two uh, spreader bars. So it's a nice and solid setup. We have some room below the hub in the center so chips can fall out. And we're good to go. Now we need a tool to cut the cube. Please forgive me the crudity of the drawing. Um, this is the tool I ground. This is high speed steel cobalt 8. So a good grade high speed steel. Um, all ground on the single lip cutter grinder with a, with a B125 uh, CBN grinding wheel. And then I had to just with stone to to polish the edges, give it a nice sharp edge. And how this is designed, uh, this is top view, this, and this is uh, side view. To start with the side view, we have a front, uh, a cutting angle of 10 degrees. And we have a back rake here, that's this, of two degrees. This is just so uh, this large surface here does not rub when we go down in the slot. Now we turn the tool 90 degrees and get this view. And as you can see, it's ground to five millimeter width. As that's this dimension. And about uh, eight millimeters behind it, I relieved it, maybe 0.5 millimeters. So the thickness of the tool doesn't rub too much. What I didn't draw here is that I also have um, about one degree taper this way. The cutting edge in front here is the widest portion and behind it, it's relieved. And the shank is just eight millimeter and I will um, hold this in a collet. On my high precision milling machine, um, I have a, a very simple way to lock the spindle against rotation when I do slotting or shaping. That's a, a large aluminum ring and this large nut. And I always have this, or almost always have this, um, more super 4 to more super 2 reduction here in the spindle. It has a thread on it and this ring rests against the quill and when I put this nut on and I tighten this a little bit, the spindle is locked. Um, you need some way of locking, um, of locking the spindle to do this. Um, otherwise you will get into problems. Um, only switching it in back gear will not do it because the back gear has obviously a little bit of backlash. You, if, you, if your mill has a spindle break, you're, <laughs> you're, uh, you're a lucky guy, of course. Um, or you have to find a way like this. This is not the most elegant version, but it's uh, very simple and I didn't have to make anything for it. I put a, a standard eight millimeter shaft collar on this tool and clamped it. So this um, a quite heavy cut, five millimeter wide, and I do not want the tool to get pushed up into the collet. So we, this shaft collar rests against the face of the, of the collet and should help. 
Now let's clamp it. Now we need to orient the tool so it's, it's uh, showing in one direction. To indicate the tool in, we're using dial test indicator setting on the table of the mill and we're just moving across the face of the tool using a pair of uh, pliers. To manipulate the tool until we get a relatively low movement in the needle. When I ground the tool, I made sure that the five millimeter, the width of the tool is, and uh, has the same center line as the shank of the tool. So centering it up in the bore is super simple. I moved the, the, the head of the mill down as far as possible, so I do not have to extend the quill very much because this looks, puts quite a bit of side load on the quill. And you do not want to do this with the quill fully extended. Keep everything very short, very rigid and very stiff. Throw out my DRO. Move over about yeah, maybe five hundredths of a millimeter, add a little bit of cutting oil. There we go. This hand wheel is cast aluminum, so the forces um, involved here are very, very low. Um, I take I take 0.05 millimeter cuts. Uh, that's uh, that's like two thousandths of an inch. And yeah, this is, this this goes very nice. And I have to say, this goes also very very fast. It's it's fast to set up. It's it's. Sometimes this is just a very good alternative to using a shaper. Yeah, I know. The guy who just sold his shaper tells you that the mill is the better shaper. <laughs> I can't wait to read the comments under this video. Uh, I, sh I, should, I should take a... <laughs> I should keep an eye on my dimensions here. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, there we go. Now at the end of the cut, I will do a few spring passes just to clean, just to clean up the bottom of the slot until you cannot hear any more um, <laughs> shaper noises. And now I've removed the table a little bit sideways. Oh, <laughs> that's what that was brilliant. Um, now you can see a perfectly nice shaped uh, keyway. So before we end, um, I have to do two more of these hand wheels. So. I wanted to quickly talk about the overall setup. I have a large parallel here in the Weiss and the hand wheel rests with this nicely machined surface right on the ground parallel here, which is a, a very nice uh, way to have it run true later once I machine it. That's also the reason why I'm not holding it in the lathe. You could set it up in, uh, in this this one would even fit in the sixth jaw nicely. Um, you could set it up on a faceplate or something like that, but this is just so simple and fast. Um, just put the part up here, two parallels as spreader bars. So I'm clamping across the part and not on some edge. 
and two cam twist clamps. Using the dial test indicator to indicate it, switch over to the Volhop the boring head. With a nice sharp, highly positive aluminum insert and bore them out to 17 millimeter. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure that this is faster than doing it on the lathe and then switching over to the shaper. You can also do it on the lathe and do, slot it on the shaper, just with the same tool I showed before, held in a uh, quick change holder or a tool holder for a lathe and uh, slot it that way. But, but work holding wise, I find this uh, faster on the mill. And the wall hopper is always a joy to use. <laughs> There we go, that was the final cut. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this quick demonstration. Thank you all for watching. See you next time. Thank you.